that's the picture that gets in my mind when I meditate on that verse, Romans eight thirty one. Yeah. If God is for us, who can be against us? It's like the whole world is gathered around you, against you, mocking and scoffing and pointing the finger and saying, you can't, you can't, you can't. Right. But if God is for you, who can be against you, right? Yeah. If you've aligned yourself with the Lord, you're putting your trust in Him. What does it matter the rest of the world, what they say, what they think? I am yours, I am yours, I am yours, send me, Lord. I am yours, I am yours, I am Welcome yours. Welcome to the Gospel Center Pro Life Podcast, a podcast designed yours, to equip, yours, encourage, and challenge you in pro life ministry and always with a focus on the gospel. Stay tuned. I felt your passion, touched your heart. Hey there. Welcome to the Gospel Centered Pro Life Podcast. I'm Vicki Kosiorg here in Charlotte, and I'm with Daniel Parks. Yes, you are. And, and here I am. We are back for another action packed podcast. Yes, we are. Hopefully it's action packed and <laughs> yeah, not just super a, boring. That's a good one. It's actually a great one. It's it's it really my favorite podcast that we do okay. are these case studies. All right. Because they're real True stories, and they're so encouraging. Yeah, there's such a huge encouragement. So, yeah. uh, we we do these podcasts not only to encourage people, but to equip them, um, maybe even to step on their toes a little bit, okay, and and guide them in some things to improve in sidewalk outreach. Yeah, but everything is focused on sidewalk outreach. Yeah, yeah, and, and how we can most effectively reach those women. Um, help to promote a choice for life and glorify God yeah. in the whole yeah. process. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I do want to mention to you guys, we always encourage you to leave reviews for us. So mm-hmm. if you could please leave us a review. Um, and I did, I think the last episode that we put out, I kind of walked people through how to leave a review. It's not super easy. Right. And so I would encourage you to Google it, whatever, because everybody listens a different way. A lot of people do listen on Apple Podcasts because a lot of people have iPhones, but there's other places that people listen and so just google it how do i leave a review for a podcast on apple Podcasts or google Podcasts or spotify or whatever and hopefully you'll be able to find that information yeah and uh, also just want to mention we will give you guys our email addresses at the end of this episode so that if you have some encouragement some questions uh, maybe some suggestions for other episodes that we could do you could shoot us over an email we'd love to hear from you and with that, Vicki, go ahead and jump into this article. Okay, so yes, there is an article that accompanies this this podcast, um, so that you know you can get you don't have to take notes. You can go and <laughs> go and read the article. Yeah. But um, one of one of my favorite stories stories, and it it actually just happened very recently. So for a little bit of background, I have mentioned this before. I think it's very valuable for people that are starting out in sidewalk ministry to consider doing this. I keep a blind copy email list of the moms, not only who have chosen life that I've counseled, but even some who have chosen abortion and have really regretted it, contacted us. And they're a part of this email list. No one else sees it but me. It's blind copy. But every morning I send out an encouraging Bible verse. Yeah. And um, hopefully to encourage the moms and and also to to really uh, disciple them yeah. in in the Lord. Many of the moms who choose life, at least here in Charlotte, often um, uh, we always share the gospel, and they they sometimes submit their life to the Lord as well. And um, and so we want to make sure that there is some sort of discipleship going on, if especially if they don't choose a mentor. Yeah. So that's the point of, the, of this email list, and the beauty of it is that I've been doing this for years and years and years. So some of these moms now, I met almost 10 years ago, yeah, and their babies are now 10 years old. I yeah. mean, they're, they're, they're growing up. And it's a way to stay in touch on at least an irregular basis. They'll, they see my name. They see my uh, email address every single morning. Yeah. And so they will oftentimes write back. And so on with this particular case, I had sent it 
from my computer, which for some strange reason, that's not normally what I use. And for some reason, it makes the, um, the God, whatever portion of the scripture that I've copied into one great big long line. Okay. And I don't know why. I don't know how to correct that. But um, <clears throat> other than to go in and, you know, space it out right. manually. But um, I didn't do it that time. And the mom wrote me right away and said, I didn't get your scripture. I think she did. I think she just didn't know it was one great big long right. line. Yeah. <laughs> and anyway, so I I quickly copied it and and pasted it and sent it to her by text. She had texted me. I didn't get your scripture. I was so encouraged to get that note from her because I knew for one thing, she said, I, I get them every morning. Yeah. I knew. And she chose life about a year ago. So this is... Um, well, her baby's a year, is a year old, so about almost two years. She's been obviously reading them, yeah, looking yeah. forward to them. Notices when when it didn't come. That alone was an encouragement. And then, as I often do when I hear from them, um, I said, "Hey, fill me in on your life," because I usually don't know. I don't remember them because right. there's so many moms. Yeah, and um, and so she sent me a picture of of her baby who had been saved from abortion, and she said. Um, my life is is just one thing after another. Uh, I should write a book, but I am content. And I said, um, I told her, you, you should write a book. Yeah. Because um, it might encourage someone else. And a little aside, that's how my author life started, is someone told me when I had this just amazing victory in life, you should write a book about this. Yeah. You might help others. And I did. And it was my first book. And yeah. I've written many, many books. Um, so I gave this woman the same advice. And um, and she t she said that um, she wouldn't know where to begin. And so I said, well, I can help you. I've written a lot of books. I'd be happy to help you. I'd even be happy to help edit what, what you write. Yeah. She does have a pretty riveting story. I, I remembered that to some degree. But... Um, but she said, I wouldn't even know where to start. And I said, well, a good kind of literary technique is start at the turning point in your life. Okay. And then, and that be your first chapter. Okay. The turning point in your life. And then go back to basically telling your story chronologically. So you're kind of starting in the middle of your story. Yeah. Okay. So. Um, I did not know that. As it's, a liter literary yeah, technique, it, it is a a literary literary technique. You can tell your story in lots of ways, but it's a it it's one that usually captures okay. people's attention, yeah, which sense. is what you kind of want to hook the yeah. reader. So then I said, "What was the turning point in your life?" And she right away said, "The day I met you guys." Wow. So he she is a mom who had come here for an abortion and um, and what she, without pause, within seconds of me asking that, wrote that the turning point in her life was meeting the sidewalk outreach team. Wow. I mean, could there be a more encouraging right, story yeah. to, to us as sidewalk counselors? So I, I, I was very honest and said, you know what? I, I meet so many women. Can you remind me of why? What happened when when you met us? And um, she said it it was um, everyone in her life, everyone, her parents, her boyfriend, all her friends were telling her kill the baby. She actually didn't want to kill the baby. Yeah, she had other children. She knew that God would not have her do it. She, I would call her a fallen, fall away, what, what's it called, backslidden Christian. Yeah. She kind of knew of God, but really wasn't following yeah. him. But she said, we were the first and only voice in her life, speaking life. Wow. And then she said um, that uh, it was the rock, the rock that I had given her. Okay. So, so just so you guys know, if you don't know what she's talking about, Vicky hand paints rocks mm -hmm. and then covers them in resin, so they're like encapsulated. This mm -hmm. paint and everything's encapsulated in the resin, and it's pretty cool little 
art. Vicky is a super artistic oh, well, person. Thank you. I am. I am an artist. I've been painting my whole life, and um, and I started painting the rocks a few years ago. My sister guided me, and I started painting unborn babies yeah. on on the rock, and then a scripture to go with the unborn baby, and um, and so with with her rock, um, it was. I, I'm sure it was an unborn baby. She said she was going to send me the picture of it, but I I don't think she ever did. But um, but she said the rock verse said um, it was Romans eight thirty one. Okay. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Amen. It's one of my favorite verses. Such a great verse, and you know what's funny is I don't usually put that verse on. The rocks. I yeah. don't. I usually go to Psalm one thirty nine and talk about being fearfully and wonderfully made, or I'll sometimes do Deuteronomy thirty nineteen. I set before you life or death. Yeah. I don't know what made me put this on this rock that I gave to her, other than yeah. the story gets even better. Okay. So that was the verse, and she said she would look at that rock during the hard times, and and she would just sit up a little taller and say, if God is for me, who can be against Amen. me? That's and good. she would she would persevere through these struggles. She went home and told her family, told the boyfriend. Lots of people abandoned her. The boyfriend dumped her. Oh, wow. But she kept that rock, and she said she would look at it during hard times and remember that She probably verse. wanted to throw it at some people. Probably the did. Boyfriend. I hope she didn't, because that's yeah. not the intention right. of the yep. rock. yep. Here's the part that I didn't know. She said that when I gave her the rock, it was an absolute confirmation that she should choose life. Okay. Because she had that verse tattooed on her arm. Oh, wow. <laughs> and you didn't I, know that given her I the rock. I did Obviously, not you know that. Known that you the rock was her. done <laughs> right. well in advance. And I don't think – this is a story – I do have a terrible memory – this is a story I think I would have remembered if I had known about right. that. Yeah. Um, I would have told you, Daniel. Do you remember me ever telling you this? No, I don't remember that. So that I didn't know about the tattoo, and apparently she didn't tell me until this two years later as wow. I'm saying, what was it about the rock? Yeah. So <clears throat> that story is so filled with God Yeah. and um, and why we need to be there. Out on that sidewalk, we may be the only voice speaking life, and God is going to bring about the miracles that need to happen yeah. to convict a heart. But from that story, um, it, which is a great story, if we ended the podcast now, I hope all of you would would you know know you need to be continuing yeah. on in yeah. this difficult ministry. But then I thought you know, there's a lot of sidewalk outreach tips, yeah, um, from this story. And so that's page two of of our article. Um, some of the things that I think we should all consider as we're out here ministering to these women. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the first one, this is not at all unusual. Women expressing the feeling that they're all alone in a choice for life. Right. Yeah. And just like you said just a few minutes ago. You are the only voice that was speaking life, right? That boyfriend, the parents, yeah. others around were speaking death. Yeah. And if you're on that sidewalk and you're speaking life, you might be the only one mm -hmm. that's really affirming that lady in doing what she knows is right. And what she wanted to do. In right. this case, she really wanted to choose life. But she said people were actually even telling her that she was stupid and they had lost all respect for her. Right. Whereas we're, of course, saying yeah, the opposite. Yeah, yeah and, and that's the picture of that verse, right? That's the picture that gets in my mind when I meditate on that verse, Romans eight thirty one. Yeah. If God is for us, who can be against us? It's like the whole world is gathered around you, against you, mocking and scoffing and pointing the finger and saying, you can't, you can't, you can't. Right. But if God is for you, who can be against you, right? Yeah. If you've aligned yourself with the Lord, you're putting your trust in him. What does it matter the rest of the world, what they say, what they think? And it seems like that's what she embraced. And she was totally. reminded 
Well, yeah. that scripture verse. Miraculously. Yeah. I mean, God had prepared that rock, you know, in advance, knowing, of course, who I was going to hand it to. Yeah. But this doesn't just apply that verse in, in this concept to the women. It applies to us yeah. as sidewalk yeah. outreach people. The world is often against you, and the hardest part of the world that is against you is going to be fellow Christians. Yeah. Because they yeah. will be. We get it all the time. I love the Lord. You can't be a Christian and be doing what you're doing. Right. Yeah. You're judging people. You're right. blah, 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 whatever people say. Right. But yeah, I mean, it's a powerful verse. And it's one I actually use on a regular basis as I'm ministering on the sidewalk. You yeah. know, when I'm on the microphone, I will share that verse. Yeah. What does it matter? That doesn't minimize the struggle and all that stuff. But what does it matter if the whole world is against you choosing life, but God is for you? Yeah. Right. If you'll trust him, he'll take care of all the other stuff. And again, it's encouraging to know that she did just that. She trusted yeah. him. Yeah. So the second point as a sidewalk tip is that we should be breathing courage and strength in the mom. Yeah. And we've talked about that so many times, the value of painting a positive vision yeah. for that mom. But capitalizing on the maternal instinct, it may be buried really deeply. But I know in my own abortion, when I first looked at the pregnancy test, there were two conflicting feelings immediately. And one was awe and wonder yeah. that I carried life. And then the second was horror because right. I wasn't at all ready, prepared. So while it, it may be quickly tamped down, that maternal instinct is part of God's design. Yeah. And that is what is normal. That's what's natural. And so breathing courage and strength in the mom that she can remember that. Yeah. That she can remember that part of her design as, as a woman. Um. The the power of scripture. This is the third one. Yeah. The gospel saves and there's power in the world in the word. Yeah. Amen. You know? Yeah. Yeah, we believe that. Yeah. Um we believe, you know, the Bible says in Isaiah that God's word will not return to him void. Mm -hmm. That God's word is gonna have an effect. Mm -hmm. And that's why this is the gospel centered pro life podcast, right. right? This is not the human centered, the baby centered right. or the woman centered right. pro life podcast. Yeah. The ministry that we're involved in is not human-centered. We want to reach human beings. We want to see human beings saved. But it's first and foremost centered on the Lord. Right. And what we do, we do centered on the Word of God, what God has said in His Word. We're standing out on the sidewalk because of what God's Word says in Proverbs 31, verses 8 and 9. Open right. your mouth for the speechless and the cause of all who are born to die. Right? So what we do is rooted in the Word of God. The way we speak should be rooted in the Word of God. And... You know, some people say and suggest that when we're on the sidewalk, maybe we should leave, you know, like religious stuff out. We should leave scripture out. We should, you know, not talk about God because after all, it might turn people off who are atheists. You know what? For me to do that would be for me to deny who I am. I'm a believer. God's word courses through my veins. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> and uh, I know the same is true for you. Yes. And we see the effect of the Word of God. But at the end of the day, like we've always encouraged you guys with, all we can do is plant seeds and water seeds, right? And so yeah. why not plant the most effective seeds? What's that? The Word of God. It's the one weapon when we put on the spiritual armor, everything is defensive. Yeah. But our one offensive weapon is the Word of God. Yeah, absolutely. So don't neglect using the Word of God. That doesn't mean you bring your biggest Bible out. And you beat people over the head with it, and all you say is scripture verses. But it does mean that the foundation of your ministry and what you say should come from the Word of God, and you should share what the scripture says, just like yeah. this verse in Romans 8 31. Yeah, yeah. So then the fourth sidewalk tip is to look for clues. Yeah. Now, that's a for, good one. It's a, it's and people such neglect an that one, actually. One. And you can only be looking for clues if you're focused. Right. So yeah. it, it relates to a lot of the other things that we talk about yeah. to sidewalk yeah. counselors. But apparently, unless this tattoo was hidden, you missed that clue. I missed that clue. <laughs> I missed that clue. Now, she might. it might have been winter, and she might have had on a coat or long sleeves, and so because she said the tattoo was on her arm. Yeah. Um, it did occur to me, I did never clarify this, it did occur to me, is it possible she got that tattoo later? 
okay. after getting the rock. Um, she did not clarify that. The sense when I was talking with her was that was the tattoo yeah. on her arm and that that was what confirmed yeah. her, her choice way, for life. That would be really powerful to know. It'd almost be more powerful to know that she got that verse tattooed on her body after. because of the rock that you gave her <laughs> because afterwards. Of the rock. But it's I also cool her. to see that, you know, if if I would ask her because I that'd will. be cool to know, because yeah. if she had had it before, that's still cool because the Lord confirmed what right. she already knew in the word of God yeah. with the rock that you gave her or yeah. it was so impactful, so yeah. life changing. She literally got it tattooed on her body. Yeah. <laughs> so, and, and by the way, I know not everyone is an artist, but most people would be able to write scripture on a wa- on a rock and paint pretty colors. Uh-huh. And I have found that these rocks have like generated so many amazing stories. Yeah. Yeah. God really is using them. There's something tangible that the woman can hold yeah. as she now, leaves. Let me say too, though, just so people don't get confused here, because we're not talking about standing at the driveway and handing out rocks right. with no, painted scripture all. verses on right. them instead right. of the brochures. Right. We're talking about once you've built a relationship, you know, once you've had a lengthy conversation Hey, I would like to give you something. Yeah. And it helps kind of, again, give them something tangible and solidify things in their mind. So that's a, yeah. that's a side thing. Maybe we do a whole episode. About we could do a, we rocks. could, could do, do one on painted rocks. I usually <laughs> give it to them once they've chosen life because, you know, they do take time. They do cost money. Yeah. The rock themselves don't, but the resin is quite expensive. Um, yeah. But anyway, so, so look for clues. Yeah. Um, so there were... let me, let me name, I don't know if you're going to go to the next one, but I want to just talk about some of the clues. Yes. That's, I think okay. that'd be good. Go ahead. So yeah, I think definitely tattoos. Yeah. That's something, if they have a scripture verse tattooed on their body, they've obviously invested a lot, right? Tattoos are expensive and it's on there for life. So there's some meaning and some value to the word of God to them. And so that's a springboard. I've seen blessed Jesus, so many Christian yeah. tattoos all the time. You would be shocked. So I saw a young lady, and I'll find after this episode, I'll try to find the picture for you. Okay. This was the very beginning stages. So I was with Cities for Life at that time, very beginning stages of Love Life, uh-huh. right? Love Life, the name had just, they had just come up with the name. This is early 2016. And this young lady, she came with a friend to the abortion center, so she wasn't the one having the abortion. But she literally had Love Life tattooed on her neck. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, it said love on one side and life. And it was like, it, I mean, it didn't look, wow. I'm not a tattoo guy. And yeah. so I don't, you know, particularly like the way that they look. Yeah. Um, It looked like it, it hurt. But <laughs> anyway, I was unique, right? And so I yeah. springboarded off of that and shared with her about, you know, that and the ministry of Love Life and, and that sort of thing. Um, another thing is if they have a cross around their neck, mm-hmm. jewelry, so earrings, a cross. Even if it's not a cross, maybe it's a Star of David or you know something like that. It could be a springboard to talk about what they believe. Do they yes. believe in God? Yeah. Another thing is Bibles. If you mm-hmm. see they have a Bible in their car, a lot of times people have their Bible in their kind of back glass there, and you can see their Bible. Yeah. Um, you could talk about, you know what the Word of God, see, you got your Bible there. You know what the Word of God says about the value of your baby and about your life and the provision that God's made for you. You can springboard on all kinds of ways off of that. Um, some other things are license plates. Some people have yep. like personalized license plates where they've spent extra money to get a scripture personalized and put on their license plate. The you scripture know what I reference. saw today? A bumper sticker as a woman left, and we think she did abort. Um, it said... A tiny human on board. And right away, you know, my thought goes, of course, to the tiny human that has just been right. aborted. And that would have been a clue had I noticed it with her coming in. She, yeah. I did see she had a car seat in the back of her car as she yeah. was leaving. And I assume that's the tiny human she was talking about. Right. Yeah. But, so those sorts of things yeah. are all Yeah, useful. anything, you know, religious symbols, uh, statements of like baby on board, stuff like that, you can use as a springboard. Um, now, you know, you could get weird about it and, you know, anything could be a clue or a sign or whatever. Yeah. Um, but specifically just something that can help, I don't know, just be a springboard for conversation. Yeah. Help you to relate to them. Yeah. On a level that they already have because it's in their car yeah. or on yeah. their body. Yeah, exactly. So. Yeah. Um, and that kind of feeds into the next one. Many do say they're looking for a sign. Right. 
That is a very common right, thing yeah. that, that we hear. And we're the sign. So often we're the sign. The RV with the mobile ultrasound unit is the sign or um, something. Yeah, something. yeah, absolutely. So um, the we talked about this already a little bit, but uh, it's point six that tangible gifts can be a reminder of God and the valid choice for life. They often go home and change their mind Yeah, and decide um, – I I don't know what went through me that I didn't go ahead and have that abortion. Right. And if you've given them something tangible, like the rocks, or we also give blessing bags, they're a reminder. Yeah, it can help solidify the decision. N- right. Not only do they go back home and you know think in their own minds and hearts, uh, you know that they need to go back because the devil's lying to them, but they also have pressure from family members, just like this story. Yep. And that scripture verse help her uh, help this young lady to remain solid. Right. Yeah. In her dis- decision for life. So yeah. pretty amazing. Um, we already talked a little bit about my daily email list, but if not that, find ways to stay connected to the mom. Yeah. Um, that can be very fruitful. Not only short term, definitely be texting and sending verses, but long term, um, be- remaining connected to the mom can be very fruitful as you build that relationship in helping to um, really promote a, a, a worldview change through the gospel, through yeah. ongoing discipleship. Um, they can also be a great source of um, information for you, like what changed their mind? How's it going? What Would they be willing to talk to another mother yeah. who is in the same place that they were when yeah. they chose life? Yeah. So, um, and the, the final... Um, the final point that is in this article, you may not know the many ways that God has perfectly prepared you for this right. for this work. You know, uh, for me, um, I, I've been an artist and a writer my whole life, and I never would have envisioned using those skills for the Lord in the way that he has yeah. brought me. But it's been 60 years of practice as an artist and as a writer, and he's using those those gifts now in in this ministry. Yeah, I had no idea. Yeah, when you know it started as just a love in in my life, and and I'm well trained in it. And but God can use so many things in ways you just absolutely never expect. Yeah. Think of your whole life really is a training ground. And God will use you with your unique whatever it is about you. Yeah. And he will use it if if you allow him yeah. to. Yeah. And so it'd be great if you could be like Vicky and paint rocks, <laughs> and write books. But maybe that's not something that you can do. Maybe there's right. something else the Lord right. can use where you can minister to these, mo- minister to these moms. Yeah. Um, certainly your testimony mm-hmm. can be a very powerful thing. I share my testimony for me and my wife, how... We were high school sweethearts, and she got pregnant in high yeah. school. And, you know, our daughter is 25 years old now. She's a blessing. That was a very difficult situation. But I can use that story to relate to the men and to the women Definitely. that are in similar situations. So your story, whatever it might be, can be one of those ways that God has prepared you to minister to these women. And so, guys, we hope that this podcast episode was a blessing to you. Again, please leave us a review. And uh, reach out to us. You can reach me, Daniel, at lovelife.org. You can reach her, Vicky, with a Y, at lovelife.org. Check out our podcast website, gospelcenteredprolife.com. There's a search feature there where you can find different episodes and maybe keywords, subjects that you want to look up. We've probably done an episode about it if you have a question, so definitely use that search feature. And also, we have a training and equipping website, sidewalks4life.com. That's where all of these articles sit, so you can go back and check out the articles. Always put a link in the show notes of the podcast that will take you to the article or at least to the list of articles that are there on that website. So take advantage of that. But until next time, God bless. God bless you all. Give me an outlet for love. Give me an outlet for gratitude. Nothing's too precious since I met you